So in the previous video, we saw how to deploy a single service application using a single Kubernetes configuration file with SkyCap formations and a, and a single stencil, um, which we access via Minicube. Um, now what I want to do is to break that single Kubernetes file into multiple, because if you are like me, you would like to be able to reuse constituents or parts of this single file multiple times. And having all of this configuration in one place is not necessarily a good practice when it comes to setting up an application that is more than just one service. So let's see how to do that. I'm going to go to formations and create another formation now. I'm going to call this one local2 and use my template library, which I've um, which I've, I've got it available uh, for you to see if you want. It's actually pop, uh, a public Git repository. You can have a, have a look at it. It's in the class of six stencils. Um, and with that formation, I'm going to add some stencils. So last time we used the all-in-one stencil, which was everything that we needed for a single web application to work. But realistically, what you want is to have multiple one of those mul multiple those, multiple of those um, um, Kubernetes configuration files, and you can bring them and put them together like Lego blocks for for multiple applications. So the first thing I'm going to use is I'm going to use my setup YAML. As you can see, this looks like the the, the top part of the previous all-in-one, and that's basically what it is. It just does two things. One is sets up a namespace. And then the second one is it just adds the credentials for um, the Docker registry that I have my images in to that namespace that it just created. So I'm just going to add that and commit it into Git repository that I have. The second thing you know, uh, that I need is have the deployment. So I have a deploy YAML in my stencil library. And here is a generic Kubernetes deployment for any service that could be. So for this service, I'm just going to look for the require one and enter the port that I need. My Docker file has my command, so I don't need the command in the Kubernetes, and that's all I need to do. So let's commit that back into repository. The next thing I need to deploy my app is a service. So here's the service again. <clears throat> it is a Kubernetes service with some best practices that I would like to enforce for my cluster. The things that I need to make sure that I enter specifically for this purpose is the port here with the require. So the external port again, I want it to be, um, let's say, 8080 for this case, and the internal port was 5000. So it should be good. <clears throat> Commenting it back. <clears throat> and with those three, I should have everything I need to deploy my application. Now, if I go and render this formation, local2, this time, instead of one single file, I have three files. And I can download them one by one, or select and download as a tarball and apply them individually. But again, I can use the CX command line tool. So I can put this in my um, automatic uh, continuous deployment tool chain, for example. So let's go back and have a look at the cluster. So local here was the one that we deployed with the first video. Let's try and deploy this one. Again, because CX command line supports multi-accounts, I need to point it to the right account. And here I see all the files, again, concatenated in one go. One thing worth mentioning here is that sometimes you might want to change the order that these files are rendered together and concatenated together. For example, while Kubernetes is is able to um, 
to create what it can and then throw an error when it cannot create a resource, you want, that might cause, um, that might force you to run something twice. An example of that is if you, if you have the deployment before the setup of a namespace, then you will not have the namespace um, the first time you run the script. So Kubernetes will reject the first file and the second file, and then it will get to set up, which will then create the namespace. And if you have to run, if you run this, the entire thing again, the second time round, the namespace is available, therefore the second and the third steps will work. In order to avoid this, you can change the order of how these, each step is rendered. Uh, but the, the order where we created it was the right order, so we don't need to do this step, but that's just something worth mentioning. So now we have everything we need. Let's again pipe this into kube control. Great. So let's have a look at our services. Great. Now, again, because we're running on Minikube, we need to get Minikube service to open the page for us with the right IP. And there we go. So now we deployed the same application but with multiple stencils. This will allow us to reuse those stencils for different applications or perhaps for different services within the same application, which is much better for controlling the change, tracking the changes, applying those formations individually. Well, another thing that it would allow you uh, allow you to do is to, you can create subgroups, which, will, which would be a, a part of the application deployment. For example, um, only web. I'm just going to call this one only web. And here I can say include when the name is web deploy YAML or the name is web service YAML. You can also select them by tag if you want. And with that, I have a when um, only web subgroup which I can render. And here I guess. I get only those two files, which I can then use using CX applied to Kube Control. That will leave out uh, my my setup, and the power of that becomes apparent when you have a lot of services and you've tagged them in the right way, which could be something like web for this one, for example, or production, if you want. And then you can create or edit a group which works based on a tag as opposed to a name. And this will allow you to not only have subgroups of your stencils, but it will let you have things that might be a one-off application operation. For example, database migration. You can create one and have one stencil group that does apply only the configuration files that are needed to um, to run a database migration. So this is the second video in the in the series, and the last and the third one, the next one, uh, what I will try to do is to uh, to show you how to reuse parts of um, the the stencils when it comes to applying a, a global policy, for example, asking for your username and password before every service, or applying all the environment variables or secrets into um, every single part that I have uh, using SkyCab stencils.